I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this CCNA Security Certification Practice Exam, where we've got a little bit of everything. We're going to concentrate on the network time protocol. We're going to throw in a little SSH, a little TCP intercept, a little something for everybody in this one. Also, we'll have multiple choice and short answer, or maybe not so short answer questions as well. As with the other practice exams I've got on YouTube and on my website, we'll go through the questions first. We have a 10 minute time limit on the video, so I won't spend a lot of time on each question. So feel free to pause the video if you need a few extra seconds to come up with your answer. And let's go ahead and warm up here, if you will, with question one. And this is actually goes back to your original CCNA studies. When you have an enable secret and an enable password sent, which takes precedence over the other? Of course, it could be choice C. You can't set both an enable secret and an enable password to begin with. And D, of course, mentions, well, they have to be set to the same value, so there is no question of precedence. But again, this one's from your CCNA study, so it's a good warm-up. Let's move to question two. What device and stratum level are found at the top of the NTP hierarchy? We'll move on to question three. Short answer here, but we better know this one because NTP is very important. And if we're writing an access list, we don't want to accidentally cut NTP off, so to speak. What port does the network time protocol use? Because if you're using that on your network and you suddenly cut it off with an ACL, oh, you're going to know it real fast. What are the options for NTP authentication? Choosing from MD5, Bellman Forward, ClearText, CHAP, and PAP. And as always, it's choose all that apply. So it could just be one. Could be more than one. What command resulted in this output? I want to give you a little hint on how to handle these kind of questions because no matter how well we prepare for an exam, sooner or later we get asked a question that's like, well, I'm not sure right off the bat. Always just take your time and take a really close look at the output. And here we're talking about something about a clock being synchronized. We're talking about a stratum. Obviously, we're concentrating on NTP in this video, so it's a pretty good guess that this is an NTP-related command. But if you saw this on an exam, just take your time, look at that output, and at least you'll be able to eliminate some incorrect answers. Alright, let's move on to the next question. What command is actually going to serve as a limit or define a limit for the overall number of NTP peers and clients that the local router can form an association with? That's also an important NTP command. We better know that one too. Let's move on. What authentication option is available for Telnet that is not available with SSH? What can we do with Telnet that we can't do with SSH as far as authentication options are concerned? What command resulted in this output? And again, if you've never seen this output before, and most likely on an exam you'd have multiple choice, not always. But always take your time and just look through the output because you're going to have some hints here. You got something about some keys, some general purpose keys, key modulus. We're generating some RSA keys. So what command resulted in that output? Questions 9 and 10, I guess these are kind of essay questions, but not too long for an essay answer. I want you to name the two options for TCP intercept mode and describe the major difference between the two the major operational difference. It's a good job interview question too because we've got two choices and we're going to do the same for auto secure. I want you to name the two operational modes for auto secure and describe the major difference between the two. Alright so those are the 10 questions. We're going to go back through and look at 10 answers. Before we hit the answers I want to invite you to come out to my CCNA security exam resource page got practice exams just like this one, some fully illustrated tutorials, and introduction to SDM, which I really recommend you read. Uh, it's an excellent introduction to this GUI. And I know that's a long URL, so if you don't want to type that in from the screen, all you have to do really is search on CCNA Security in Google, and we'll be on the first page of those results, usually in the top five matches. So let's go back through these questions now. 
and take a look at what we've got. With the enable seeker and an enable password set, it's one of the first things you learn about passwords in Cisco. The enable secret always takes precedence over the enable password. So the correct answer there was A. And when it comes to the NTP hierarchy, atomic clocks are at the top of that hierarchy. And the top level is actually stratum zero. And keep in mind that Cisco routers cannot get their time directly from a stratum zero device. Again, you want to keep this one in mind when you're configuring your ACLs. NTP uses UDP port 123. UDP 123. As far as the options for NTP authentication, it's interesting, and I'll, sh I'll create a video for this and show you this as well. It's also in my study materials for this exam. The only option you have is MD5, but it's one of those interesting commands where even though you only have one option, you still have to specify the option, and you set that with the NTP authentication key command. I know this kind of question can be tough, and again, that's kind of why I ask them in these practice exams, but this is also really the first command you want to use when you're troubleshooting and verifying NTP, and it's show NTP status. Show NTP status. It's going to show you right off the bat whether your clock is synchronized, what stratum level you're at what the reference device IP address is and all other kinds of great information. But mostly what you need basically uh, for NTP troubleshooting is going to be right there in that first line. So show NTP status. Very important command with NTP verification and troubleshooting. Question six, you can limit the number of peers with the NTP max associations command. Now for Telnet versus SSH, you can use a line password for Telnet, as you've seen in some of my other videos, where you just do line VTY04 and actually put a password on the lines, but you can't do that with SSH. What you'll need to do there is either use AAA or you'll need a locally configured database with the username password command. This one's kind of a mouthful here, so excuse the box there, but I'm going to type this in for you. This is crypto key generate RSA. Rolls right off the tongue, right? Crypto key generate RSA. And you can see that's exactly what we were doing and then it asks us how many bits we wanted in the modulus. We put in 1024 and then we get the message that the keys are being generated. Now to summarize, and like I said, I'll, I'll create another video to give you the details and show you the configuration of TCP intercept mode. Generally, this is run in intercept mode. That's one of the actual two intercept, uh, intercept modes. It allows the router to intercept incoming TCP send requests and answer them on behalf of the server. You can also run it in watch mode, which is really kind of passive and the router does not intercept those incoming SIN packets, but it passes them on through and watches for a large number of incomplete connections. And the router will close those incomplete connections if they're not completed after a certain period of time, and by default, that's 30 seconds. With Auto Secure, the modes are interactive and non-interactive, which kind of tells you the major difference between the two. With interactive, you and I as network admins are prompted for input. It looks kind of like setup mode on a Cisco router. And if you're going to configure anything requiring user interaction, whether that be SSH, enable passwords, anything like that, you should use that mode, and it's the one I prefer to use. Because non-interactive, the other mode, that's where Cisco's recommended settings for auto secure are put into action. And believe me, they're very secure. They may actually be a little too secure for your network. So again, there's nothing wrong with either mode, but do know that we've got interactive mode, which looks like setup mode, and non-interactive, where the best practices are installed. Again, I invite you to come out to the security exam resource page. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you on the website.